Hey guys, uh, welcome to Eric's Guitar Corner. Um, I'm going to, tonight, I'm going to do kind of a serious video. It's uh, kind of a serious matter when you break a string and need to, re uh, or change strings, not restring. I'm going to uh, replace a broken string. This is going to be kind of a tutorial video on how to change a string on a guitar because I see people that break strings on guitars and they take them to Guitar Center and I'm like you really don't need to waste your time doing that it's so easy you can do it yourself you know but uh it's not a big deal everyone breaks strings but I'm gonna go ahead and replace this broken string and go ahead and restring the guitar as you can see this G string is broken and uh, I'm going to go ahead and replace that string first and tune that up. I'm going to show you how I do that on an acoustic guitar. This is my Epiphone, Epiphone EJ200, which I love. And I've done an unboxing video of this guitar. If you want to watch that, you can go back. And I don't really know how to post links and stuff, but I really like this guitar. But first, what you want to do, if, if you break a string on an acoustic you want to, uh, you got to pull the bridge pin up. As you can see, this is broken, but I use these needle nose pliers, these little tiny needle nose. They're, these aren't needle nose. These are like wire clippers, or uh, I guess I call them the small wire clippers. And I take them and I put it under, under the uh, bridge pin, just like that. You don't want to put any pressure on it or squeeze it because you don't want to clip that bridge pin or scratch it up or anything. And it shouldn't take much to pull it out of it. As you can see, it just flew right out of there. So uh, I'm going to have to find out. Oh, there it is. It's on the floor right there. But this is what your bridge pin is going to look like when you pull it out. These are bridge pins and they, they have a slot on one side. As you can see right there, probably. Um, the slot on when you put it back in that slot should be facing towards the string and towards up the neck you know but anyway uh i got that pulled out and i'm gonna go ahead and take this uh string un unwind it from around the the uh tuning peg here and pull that off toss that off to the side for now and what i want to do is find my replacement string. I've got these strings. These are my new favorite acoustic strings. These Ernie Ball aluminum bronze. And uh, I'm going to open these up and get my G string out of there. These are a uh, 11 set, which are my favorite acoustic strings or favorite gauge anyway. These are my favorite acoustic strings also. And you want to pick out the G string here which is going to be the, on this particular set, the 30. That's the G strap. Make sure I got that right. So this is, no, I'm sorry, that's incorrect. The 22 is going to be the G string, which the 22, which is a wound string on most, or on, on all acoustic sets, really, the, the G string is going to be a wound string. On electrics, it's not wound, the G string, but... I'm going to take this one, and it, this all depends on what gauge strings you choose. For acoustic, I mostly like 11s. Some people like a little heavier gauge for acoustics, but I prefer the 11s. You want to, and this thing is all wound up, you want to take it and unwind it, stretch it out. You don't have to stretch it, but just straighten it out. <laughs> and what you do is uh, you're going to take that and put that down in the hole there. I already lost the bridge pin. Hold on, lost the bridge pin. Oh God, where is the bridge pin? You guys probably know where it is. You're like, it's right over there. But, uh, okay, hold on. Okay, found the bridge pin. Um, you want to take this, uh, let me scoot this forward a little bit. You want to take this, uh, <laughs> the ball end of your string, stick it down in that hole there where the string came, came out of in your bridge and you want to take your pin with the slot end facing towards the neck there, towards the sound hole 
if you will. You obviously don't want it facing away. You want that's where the strings are gonna come up and come out. You want to put that down in there. You don't have to use a tool or anything, just push it down and you can feel it get pretty tight there. And you want to take and stretch the string out. Let me adjust that a little bit. And you uh, take the string and stretch it across. I like to line up my tuner beforehand. I like to take it and sew the hole in the tuner is maybe at like a, uh, I guess that would be like a, 90, uh, 125 degree angle. You don't want it pointing this way is what I'm saying. You want the hole in the tuner to be pointing that way, about that way. So you can push, You can, when you put the string in there, you can pull it tight and get a good crease in there to where it holds. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and move that into place there. That's slightly, a little, that's a little bit too much. About like that. See? See what I'm saying here is you put that through the hole. Ah, that didn't go through. Uh, I don't have my glasses. I should get my glasses. Anyway, you want it. That's about here. Let me turn that a little more. You want it about like that so that the string is going. You don't want it going back that way because it's just going to slide out. You want that angle to where it's coming back like that so you can get a good angle and it gets a good grip on there. And then you take it and tighten it up. Right? And I like to, that's probably a little bit too much. I like to take and hold my hand like this so it's about half a foot off of the guitar there. And that, that, when you tighten it up, that'll give you about three winds around the tuning peg. Here, let me keep going here. That might be a little bit too much, but that's okay. Here, we'll go. We'll keep going. And also, I don't know if you can see this, but when you're winding this, you want this excess string sticking out of the post. You want that to be over the top of what you're winding. So when your windings... It's going to be tough to show. You want your windings to go underneath that. And you got to be careful that and you got to make sure they stay underneath that excess. Because if they go over the top of it, it's not going to work that well. But I mean, you got to make sure it stays in the nut there too, in the nut where the. Uh, the string passes over. This is the nut right here, and you want to make sure it stays in there. You don't have to worry about it too much until it starts getting kind of tight. You know, keep going, keep going for a while. It's still staying under there. And ideally, you want about uh, eh, about four wraps around this post here, which means it's going to be, you're going to see about four layers of string there. And I'll show you that here in a second when I get that. It's going to take a while to tighten up and you can buy a, uh, a string winder. You can buy a string winder. I don't, I've never used one literally, but I kind of enjoy the process of just string, tuning it by hand. And I would like to watch the string tighten, but you know, the string winders will make it go a lot faster. I'm going to make sure that I like to watch the way it winds. You got to keep a good idea on the way it winds or keep a good eye on the way it winds there. I'm keep going here. And it's weird how uh, you'll be holding it up and then all of a sudden it'll and it'll seem like it's taken forever. But then like in two winds, all of a sudden it'll be tight. Not tight enough to actually be in tune, but. So I'm going to keep going here. Keep going. <laughs> keep tuning. Keep tuning here. I may have had a little bit much excess. I don't know. That might, that, that's probably about right. As you can see, I'm getting closer and closer. I like to hold it tight with my thumb. 
like that like that over the body of the guitar and I put I push my my fingers like right here down on the on the body of the guitar and kind of hold it tight until it's tight enough to where I can let go and the string's not just going to flop over all over the place and just fall off of the uh, nut and stuff. Okay, so now it's about time to let go. Okay, so... So you can hear it's starting to sound like a guitar string now. <laughs> but, uh, there we go. <laughs> that, uh, bridge bin seems way too down. But anyway, um, so that's, uh, what it should look like. And, uh, let me show you this up close here. At, uh, if I can get that to focus in. I've never actually done that before with my <laughs> Can't really see it. There, sh there should be about, uh, uh, three, there should be about four wraps around that post. But anyway, um, <laughs> way out of tune right now but I got that string replaced and you can take the uh, clippers here uh, my my wire clippers and clip that excess off of there clip that excess off of there send that on the ground uh, you don't really need that some people leave that on there because they think it looks cool but that's just kind of ridiculous but. and I like to kind of keep tuning, tuning as I go. I have a built-in tuner on my Epiphone, which I'm going to use. But it's a little sharp right now, actually. So also, if it's a little sharp on a new string, you don't necessarily need to tune down. You can stretch it out because the string isn't stretched, and plus it's not wrapped tightly around the post quite yet. And there's always going to be a little bit of uh, looseness there looseness right here as you uh, you can see it a little bit clearer there and it'll tighten up around that post what i like to do is just like hold down about the third fret or so and take and pull that string up like this like that pull it up you don't have to pull real hard it's just especially on new strings because you want to uh, stretch them out and also stretch them or pull them tight around that post as you can hear it's a little flat already from what it was so that string's pretty good i like to do it a few times because new strings take a little bit of stretching and people uh sometimes Guitarists, especially new guitarists, they get a little scared because their guitar is not staying in tune because they didn't stretch the strings properly. And I like to just kind of, you don't really have to move your finger like that, but just hold it and pull up. I, I like to do that just so you're not pulling, you're taking the tension. You don't want to pull up and pull tension off of this. You want the tension to remain the same there at your nut. And I usually hold it about the third fret. And as you can see, it went a little flat there. That's okay. <laughs> I'm going to keep tuning that, uh, just pull a little more on that. Some, with these new strings, it takes a lot to 
you don't get discouraged. It it takes a minute. People all get excited about new strings and then they get disappointed when they're not immediately in tune, but <laughs> So that one's pretty good. That one's good there. I think that's pretty good in stretch. But having said that, uh, now <laughs> you repeat the process. That was a string that was already broken, and I'm gonna get let you guys on a look in on a little secret. That was, I did not break that string. I, I cut it just because I wanted to show you how to change a broken string. But uh, my goal is to change all these strings tonight. I don't know if I want this video to show every string, but what I like to do, I don't like to replace one string. I like to replace all the strings if I need to replace one. So what I like to do is I start on the B string, since the G string was broken, and there's a reason I also showed the G string broken first, is because the G string, I like to start, when I tune, I like to start from the middle and work my way out, either from the G string or the uh, B string, D string, sorry, G A D, the D string, and the D string here, which is the fourth string, and work your way out this way or out that way from either one because you want this to be as close as possible if you start on the e string and work your way up you're going to end up that's just going to multiply your error in your tuning unless of course you're using a tuner which most people do nowadays but i'm just talking about like old school tuning methods but uh also there's more tension on these lower strings and that but we won't go into that right now but uh so anyway, we got our G string on there. Let me check the tuning on that one more time. It still sounds good. So what I like to do, so I'm going to change, next string I'm going to change is the second string, which is the A string. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> B string, sorry. B string. Second string. I call, I'm so used to calling it the second string. I learned guitar from Guitar World, so I know it is the second string. But this string right here, you want to work your way from the inside, which is the string we just changed, the G string, to the B string. And I'm going to replace that one next. And what I like to do, I don't like to just cut it. Some people say it's okay to do that. I don't like to do it just because it, it just changes the tension immediately and it's kind of a shock to the guitar, I think, but some people disagree with that. So I'm gonna take uh, and loosen that. I like to loosen that. And then I get that good and loose to where it's not really gonna do anything when I cut it, it's not really going to matter. So, and then I take, let me turn my tuner off here. I take and cut it with the clippers. And I take and uh, you take the, all this excess string here. It's all wrapped around here. <laughs> And, yeah, got it. you unravel all that, unwrap it from the post and pull that off. And you do the same thing here that I showed you before. You pull that, you know, you want to take your, your clippers and don't put too much pressure on it. These actually seem really loose. I didn't know they were that loose, but you pull that up, pull the pin out, and pull the string up. Throw that on the ground. And it's basically the same process from there on out. I just kind of wanted to show you guys how to replace the broken string. And then 
from there on out, you're restringing your guitar, starting from the G to the B to the A, A E, and then the G, E, or the, <laughs> you, you know what I'm talking about. Starting from your middle, working, the way, you're working your way out, and uh, that's the way I do it. That's the way I restring guitars, and that's the way I'm restringing my Epiphone. Of course, classical guitars are a little different. Ep electric, uh, electrics are different. And uh, hope, hopefully you learn something from this. I don't know. Maybe uh, there's lots of videos on YouTube about this, but I kind of feel like this is just everything I've accumulated over the years and learned from changing strings. I've changed a lot of strings, and uh, hopefully you guys learn some from, something from this and get some use from this. So anyway, have a good night, and uh, check out some of my other videos. I play guitar and I also do some comedy stuff so have a good night